At the beginning of the pandemic, I covered a bunch of obsolete features from Pro Engineer that you can still use in Creo Parametric. And the reason that a lot of these features were made obsolete is because they have very specific use cases and you can usually accomplish the same thing through other different commands. And so I forgot to cover one of the available features and it is called a project section blend. Like the name implies with a blend, you're going to create two or more sections and then you connect the vertices of the sections with the project command well, you're going to take some curve and you're going to place it on some other different surface. So with a project section blend, you are sketching two sections and only two sections and then projecting those sections onto surfaces like curved surfaces and then connecting them together. That's why I'm using this part model, which is a shrink wrap of an assembly so I can have a bunch of different curved surfaces. With these obsolete features, they are not available in the interface by default. You're going to have to change a configuration option. If I go to File and then Options, Options, down at the bottom we have Configuration Editor, and I'm going to scroll down a bit. I have a couple options turned on like Enable Obsoleted Features, another one that gives you those old features deals with anatomic features that's another option that i have set in here but anyhow enabled obsoleted features allows you to use the project section blend command but it's not going to appear in the interface if you go to customize and ribbon well you could use say your common tab or the global tab in order to add those different obsoleted features to the interface let me cancel out of the options dialog box. I'm going to go to my common tab where I've added some groups for the obsoleted anatomic features and obsoleted features. Here is the command for project section blend. And you have two different choices. You can do solid or thin. Well, let's start out by making a solid feature. And this is going to open up the old Pro Engineer 2001 model dialog boxes where you have a bunch of elements and action buttons and the elements have a status that tells you what you need to do and so the first thing that i need to do is select or create a sketching plane for my sections i'm going to turn on my datum plane visibility i created some datum planes to assist me so i will choose the datum plane that i created and now there is a red arrow on the computer screen. Back in Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier, you had to specify the viewing direction for looking at the sketch plane in order to orient the model in sketch mode and also to orient your sketch on the sketching plane. I'm going to flip the direction. I want to look in the other direction. Now I will click the OK button. And then for setting up your sketch, you had to choose a side of the computer screen, the top, bottom, right, or left, and then choose a flat plane or surface or a datum plane to face that direction. So I'm going to choose to face the top of the screen. I've got another datum plane I can use. Let me select that one. And so now I am in sketch mode. Let me change to a clipped model view so that I'm only seeing on one side of my sketch plane. Let me also go to my sketch view so I'm looking right in on my sketch plane. I can see that I only have one sketch reference. To make sketching easier for me, I will go to the references dialog box in order to add in one of my other datum planes as a reference. Let's hit the solve button and then close out of there. And so now I'm going to sketch my first section. Let's use a center rectangle and I will click on the intersection of my sketch references and then let's make it about yay big and let's change this to a value of 120 and let's change this one to a value of 200. So that is good for my first section. I'm going to change from my shading with edges view to a no hidden line view just so that it's easier to see that on the upper left vertex 
there is an arrow. The direction that the arrow points does not matter. The arrow is intended to bring your attention to what's called the start point. The start point in one section is going to line up with the vertex on the start point in the other section. And if the start points don't line up, you will end up getting twist in your feature. So it's important to know which vertex is the start point in the section. So I'm happy with my first section. To get to my second section, I can hold down the right mouse button. And then from the pop-up menu, you can choose to toggle section. And this will make the first section inactive. And I can work on my second section. And I'm going to snap into the same location. And I'm going to let the proportions be the same. And let me middle mouse click. And let's change this dimension. I'll use a value of 240. That's good. So I am happy with my two different sections. By the way, in the second section, you can see that the arrow appears on the upper left-hand vertex. So my start points line up. If you wanted to change the start point, well, you could select a vertex and then right mouse click and hold. And eh, somewhere there's start point. Maybe it's in the... Back in the day, it used to be under the setup, like feature tools, and here's start point where you can choose a different start point. But anyhow, this is good for the two different sections. I will use the right mouse button to get to the check mark in order to complete my sketch. And now, let me rotate the model. Let me turn off my datum plane display. Let's go back to shading with edges. I'm being prompted right now to select the surfaces that it will intersect with. Let me grab my message area and make it a little bigger so that you can see the prompt. Select two surfaces as intersection bounds. So for the first intersection bound, I will select that surface. Let me rotate the model so I can get to this other surface. I'm holding down the control key and I will pick that surface. Now it tells me that all elements have been defined select elements or actions from the dialog box. At this point, I will just click the OK button and the feature is created between there. I'm going to repeat this one more time using the thin option and I'll create a cross section to show you the difference between the two. So let's choose the thin option. And once again, I'm prompted for a sketching plane. Let me turn on my datum plane display. I will use this plane. Let's flip the direction and use the same reference to face the top of the computer screen. Let's clip the model. Let's go to our sketch view. And once again, let's add in a sketch reference. I'm just doing the same things I did before. And let's sketch in a couple of rectangles. Change the dimensions. Toggle section. Another rectangle. And for this one, I'll just let it snap to whatever size that it snapped to. So let's hit the check mark in order to complete. And now it is prompting me to indicate the side uh, of the entity in order to create the feature. In other words, right now it'll add the thickness to the outside. You could flip it to the inside. You can flip back and forth between those two directions. Or you could use the both option to do a thickness symmetric about the feature. I will use a width of 10 for the value. And now, once again, I'm being prompted to select the uh, two different surfaces that I want to project onto. I will select these two different surfaces. Let me turn off my datum plane display and then hit the OK button. And so there we have the thin feature created between the other two cylinders. And let me go to my view tab. Let me go to the datum plane display again once more, just so that I can select a plane for creating a section. And let's show a hatch pattern and then hit the check mark. And I just want to show you the difference between the solid project section blend and the thin one. Well, the thin one, it just creates a thin walled feature. Here we have the solid one. So there you have it. Again, just one of those obsolete features. 
hey, let me know in the comments if you have a potential use case for the project section blend. Again, just an obsoleted feature from the pro engineer days.